The first time that Rockstar ever teased a new game in one of their current games was in 2001's Grand Theft Auto 3, where we could discover a billboard that says, See you in Miami. And, as we all know, that's where 2002's GTA Vice City took us. Since then, Rockstar has thrown in various Easter eggs like this into their games, hinting at what's to come in the future. And today, we're going to be going over the history of that, and essentially how Rockstar Games might be teasing Grand Theft Auto 6 in GTA Online. Now, I've mentioned this on the channel before, but it's super interesting. So in October 2019, a user on the GTA forums by the name of Benefactor69 made a very lengthy post that in short details how Rockstar have possibly tested GTA 5 cars in the Ballad of Gay Tony before GTA 5 released, and how they're now possibly testing GTA 6 vehicles in GTA Online. And basically around March 2017, the interior detail of vehicles and overall quality has risen like no other. And around this time, and since then, the number of older classic style rides have also started to rise. We started to see more of these opposed to those really overpriced supercars. Now this is important because the only credible GTA 6 leak that we've ever gotten from March 2018 details how GTA 6 will take place most likely in Vice City and South America. And it's going to be codenamed Project Americas. And it's going to span across multiple decades taking place in both the past and the present. So for that, we would need those older classic style rides. And I know people can agree to disagree on this theory, but after doing some digging, I've discovered that Rockstar has a pretty long history of doing this from way back in 2006 with table tennis all the way up into as recent as Red Dead Redemption 2. Now it's really interesting that a company that's gotten so much attention for creating controversy and allowing you to beat up prostitutes and take back the money uh, decides to go the route of releasing a table tennis game for their next big hit. Way back in 2006, Rockstar surprised fans with a new kind of game called Rockstar Games Presents Table Tennis. Sweet, this is super random, but maybe Rockstar's just trying something new. Well, kinda. So, this game was never actually intended to be released. So, what caused this then? Well, initially, Table Tennis was created as a tech demo for the Rockstar Advanced Game Engine, or just the Rage Game Engine, that was made prior to the launch of the Xbox 360 and PS3. But this simulator of tennis was so good that Rockstar decided to release it as a fully-fledged game. So, that begs the question then, what makes table tennis so important? Well, what makes it so important is that it's the reason we have games like GTA 4, Red Dead Redemption 1, GTA 5, and Red Dead Redemption 2, and many others in between, as they all utilize this Rage game engine that was tested from a simple game of tennis. Now, if we jump ahead in time to 2012, we've got Max Payne 3. Now, remember, this game released one year prior to the launch of Grand Theft Auto 5, and it wasn't until Grand Theft Auto 5 released that fans decided to revisit Max Payne 3 and discovered that there are images plastered all around the walls of various chapters in the game that feature GTA 5 airplanes, which include the Luxor, the AC-130, the Hydra, and then another bag shot of the Luxor. But that one was always super interesting as these were the legit GTA 5 air vehicles in this game that came out one year before the game that these planes were supposed to be in. Now, that's not it though. Where things actually get really interesting is that within the GTA 5 story mode, but also in GTA Online, there's a yacht. And I just want to throw this in there and say that yes, we know that Rockstar created both Max Payne 3 and Grand Theft Auto 5. And because they're from the same developer, assets might be reused between the two games. Sure, maybe I'm overthinking this one, but it could have been the Rockstar developers testing out this detailed yacht in Max Payne 3 with the intentions to use it in Grand Theft Auto 5, or maybe the developers just got lazy and decided to copy and paste it over into GTA 5 because they worked really hard on it in Max Payne 3 and they didn't want that to be the end of it. I don't know. But the yacht does appear in both Max Payne 3 and GTA 5. So 
Even the interiors, they're almost exactly the same. And actually, we don't get to see the interior until the Mission Series A Coke in GTA Online. Before that, we just kind of see the exterior and the outside and the single player mission, but also in GTA Online. So that there, I've always thought is super, super interesting. And now moving on to 2018's Red Dead Redemption 2, remember how I mentioned that GTA 6 is allegedly going to span across multiple decades? While this isn't confirmed, we've gathered now how Rockstar tends to hint at things to come in future games in their present games. But also, like in table tennis, they use previous games to sometimes test their future games. Well... If this GTA 6 leak holds true about taking place across multiple decades, then Red Dead Redemption 2 is the first Rockstar game, game to my knowledge to actually utilize this. Initially taking place in 1899, and then fast forwarding after the story to 1907, we can see in various changes around the maps, not only to characters, but more interestingly, the buildings. For example, in Valentine, we see a brand new building constructed from start to finish, not only as the story progresses, but as eight years go by. And this isn't the only case. There are, you know, pieces of the forest in the woods that are chopped down and those trees are used for other means or we see other buildings that are tore down or that become dilapidated over time and essentially my theory is that hey if GTA 6 does take place across the multiple decades we will see things like that happen which is really cool because Rockstar will probably do that in way more detail than what they did in Red Dead Redemption 2. Now also being that GTA 6 is rumored to take place in an unnamed South America American city, there's going to be jungles. I mean, that, that's a given. And because of this, I've also theorized that Guarma from Red Dead Redemption 2 might potentially have been created to test out a jungle environment. As we haven't ever really seen Rockstar create a jungle adaptation before, that I know of at least. But what makes me have faith in this, like Dutch always says, is in this theory, is that in Guarma, this map is super detailed, this island. It's like overly detailed, but it's only accessible in one short chapter. And aside from the glitches to get there, it's never seen again. So why exactly would so much time and detail be spent on something so minor? Now, that's not a bad thing, and that's not me complaining. That could just be how amazing Rockstar Games is, and that's why Rockstar is amazing, because that could be the case. But considering everything else that I mentioned in this video, it, to me, makes a whole lot of sense for Guarma to possibly just be... Hey, a future adaptation in Rockstar Games developers testing out this jungle environment. Because even if we go into free mode or free camera mode and zoom around, this map is so freaking big and we don't even see 90% of it. So anyways, that's kind of my theory there with that. But overall, that's also a short history of kind of Rockstar Games and what they do within their games that's so interesting, but also just a big giant theory to back up the big giant theory of GTA 6 cars being teased in GTA Online. Now, I suppose only time will tell when it comes to that and GTA 6 releases and we see a lot of cars carried over, which we will see, but a lot of them might be very similar or we might see GTA 6 taking place across those multiple decades that RDR2 kind of worked with and also with Guarma in the jungles. Maybe we'll see something similar like, hey, I remember this little building from Guarma in RDR2 and now it's in the jungles of GTA 6. So anyways, hopefully y'all enjoyed this video. If so, please give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing. A little love goes a long way and uh, videos like this are always super cool to make. So thank y'all for tuning in. I'm Zach Cox. Love you all and I hope to see you in my next video.